Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Welcome to Manifest. You are not going to want to miss the next four weeks of a series that we're going to do that we have never done in the 10 years of the Manifest program. We have a large audience of people from the Baptist denomination, Southern Baptist and Independent Baptist, Baptist. In fact, according to a survey, one of our largest audiences in the United States are those of the Baptist persuasion, and they love prophecy. We're going to, be, however, share with you for the next four weeks with a wonderful Southern Baptist pastor who's one of my closest friends, Dr. Ron Phillips from Abba's house. Man, Hallelujah. it's so good to have you good here. Good to be here. We've been waiting to do this for a long time. We sure have. And we're going to deal with the Holy Spirit, Ron. That's right. We're going, to, we're going to deal with the Holy Spirit, and we're going to get started right now, and you will not want to miss this series. I have a little outline that I made here, Ron, called God's Lawyer on trial in the church. Wow. And let me give you the verses. First uh, John 2 and 1. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate. Now there's the word yep. I want people to look at. With the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now the word advocate in Greek is perikletos, and it yep. means one who is called alongside to help another, which the word comforter, That's the right. Holy Spirit's the comforter, is the same word there. But here's what I want to share with people. In Greek, it was used in a court of justice to denote a legal assistance and counsel for the defense. So what I've always taught is Christ is our advocate in heaven. That's right. The Holy Spirit is our advocate on earth. That's right. But here's what's interesting, uh, Pastor. We're at a point in the body of Christ where instead of the Holy Spirit defending us and the Holy Spirit standing in our defense, ministers are having to defend, having to defend the Holy Spirit in the church because there's people who either don't believe in the manifestation or the power of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Am I right on You're that? You're exactly right. You see, there was a, a doctrine that rose with B.B. Warfield in the early part of the 20th century called cessationism. Mm -hmm. That word means that at the, at the closing of the biblical canon or at the, uh, when the last apostle died, then all of a sudden all these... Uh, all these strange, wonderful, weird things be, were supposed to have quit happening. <laughs> the problem is they haven't. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, and there are other, uh, John MacArthur now, uh, mm -hmm. a, great, a great man, I don't agree with him on this, also has taught the cessationism of the gifts. The only problem is, Perry, it's totally unbiblical. And even in charismatic churches that I go to now, there's an embarrassed silence mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about when the Holy Spirit really manifests himself uh, the contemporary movement uh, has kind of taken over even in some of our charismatic churches where they'll say, now, don't let that happen all the time or don't let that happen some of the time because it might embarrass mm -hmm. the prospects that, uh, that come in here. Well, kind we of like they call yeah. that now the seeker-sensitive movement. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. We need to be Holy Ghost-sensitive. Yeah, uh, uh, that's what I said, yeah. And I've spent 20 years since I was baptized in the Holy Ghost in 1989. I've spent over 20 years... Uh, in apologetics and defense of the work of the Holy Spirit. These things have not ceased. Uh, they're still here, and uh, we need to understand that. Now, I, I was telling you earlier, uh, one of the first things that came to me and said was, now, they, the, Paul wrote Corinth, uh, the, to Corinth early, and he was in the early blush of Pentecost when that happened. So, right, right. But now the book of Romans comes along. Years later. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's the book of Romans uh, it's the mature, organized gospel, and you don't find uh, a lot of the manifestation gifts mentioned there. Well, they need to read the book of Romans. Yeah, well, well you show them what you showed me just a little bit. Yeah, ago Romans because, chapter 1, verse yeah, 7 yeah. and following. Paul's writing to the church at Rome, sending grace to them, and he gets down to verse 11, and he says, I long to see you yeah. that I may impart... Now we, they we were lacking something. Impart, they needed an they. impartation. It was something they couldn't learn. Yeah, they were lacking something. They were lacking. Mm -hmm. I need to impart to you some charismata. And that the word in English is spiritual gift. That's but right. the gr Greek word gift is charismata, right? That's right. That's it. To the end. To the end, that they might be established. They weren't established. Isn't that amazing? I mean, here's the one, you know, with all the doctrine of predestination right. and all the. Uh, all the organized stuff. Right. And then you go to Romans 8 and they don't know how to pray. 
Do you know, well, Perry, well, the Holy Spirit is mentioned more in the eighth chapter of Romans than any other book in the Bible. You know, I've noticed the that the whole chapter deals with it. And, and really, we'll t probably talk about that on a later program. Yeah. It, it deals with helping our infirmity. Yeah. We're going to do a program on the Spirit helping our weaknesses later on. Now, let me ask you a question. And I know that when I grew up in what we, we call a full gospel church, yeah. meaning you believe the, the you know, the, it's like kind of like a, the four square gospel, salvation, sanctification, healing, and Holy Spirit baptism are the four pillars of that great denomination. Right. So we grew up with that same concept. Um, so when I grew up in the full gospel movement, we never doubted any of the nine gifts. Right. We never doubted the manifestations. Now, there were some people that got a little in themselves from time to time, yeah. and they would embarrass you. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But... Outside of that, we, I never was skeptical or doubting because I saw my own father pray for a German woman one time, Mary Ann Spence. My and her my. husband was a doctor from Washington, D.C., and they came to our church. And my dad went to pray for her, and he started praying in the Spirit. Now, to my dad, he was simply praying in the prayer language, but she, he actually was praying in fluent German. And she heard it. She heard my it. God. She understood it. And it so convic convinced them of God's presence, they started attending my dad's church. He attended the great Methodist church in Washington that many of the presidents had attended. Wow. He was a medical doctor from that area. So when you grow up around that and people say to you it's not real, you smile and laugh. Yeah. <laughs> why, why, why do you think, though, is, is, it, is it a theological issue in the universities and the theological seminaries? Why is there so much of this teaching that certain gifts have died? Let's say during the past 50 years, this, the, 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 the teaching that has spread. You would know more about this, of course, than I yeah. would as far as yeah. I think why. a couple of things have happened. Number one, I think there... Uh, there, there was a what I call a modernism or a liberalism that crept into the seminaries and schools, and besides denying many of the the inerrancy of Scripture, there was an embarrassed silence about anything that had to do with the supernatural. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was a, out of Germany this school called demythologizing that we need to just cut everything out of the Bible like Thomas Jefferson did that says anything about the miracles or anything about the supernatural. Hmm. And the problem is that worked pretty well for evangelicals and Baptists during the 60s and 70s when we were fighting Madeleine Murray O'Hare yeah. <laughs> and everything was about defending the faith. Right, right. But now we've got a generation, 90% of the generation rising believes in God, believes in the supernatural. Now it may not be right. What, right. But they are looking, right. they, they know that what man has tried to figure out has not worked. Mm -hmm. And so they are looking for something fr from beyond. It might be the demonism you see in a Harry Potter movie or, or the force of Star Wars. Right. Or, but this generation is, is hungry for something real. And the old, that old dried up dead stuff is not going to work today. Wow. There has to be a man of, Paul said, I'm coming to you. Uh, uh, with a manifestation, yeah, yeah. a demonstration mm -hmm. of the Spirit and power. And the generation rising today uh, is not looking for a conversation. They're looking for a demonstration. Yeah. Well, see, one of the things is in the ministry of Jesus, he was considered to be a fake, right? Yep, that's right. He wasn't, but he was. And you have people today saying anyone who claims to have the Spirit's a fake. Then they accused Christ of working through Beelzebub, which was a uh, Philistine demon, right. uh, God, and uh, in other words, they were saying he was working through demonic power. That's and right. you have people today, oddly enough, that when people claim to have the Holy Spirit, they say it's a demon in them. Mm. Then you had Jesus was accused of deceiving people with his miracles. And when miracles happen today, you have entire denominations That's right. that say it's fake. Now, That's I never right. understood how a preacher who can pick up the Bible has more confidence in the devil being able to create the supernatural, but God can't do anything anymore. That's right. And it's like saying God doesn't speak to us today. You know, it's like... God help that, us if he doesn't that's, speak to us. That's exactly get, what they how believe. How did you get called to preach? That's how right. did that sinner get convicted to come down to the altar? Right. And if, if God doesn't answer, let's think about this. If God doesn't speak today, then that means when that, when that person is praying, asking God to save them, he can't hear us. That's right. Because that's he's right. not speaking and manifesting. I mean, the whole theory of God does not speak today is totally... To me, it's totally heretical. And don't you think possibly some of this is because, let's say, at the turn of the century or the 1800s, there was a manifestation of, of the Spirit among people, common people, 
That's uneducated right. people right. and poor people. Because right. always in the ministry of Jesus, it was the poor people right. who accepted him immediately. That's right. And it was the aristocrats who didn't. That's right. Okay? And don't you think that maybe when the manifestation of the Spirit started, there were these, and it was kind of an elitist spirit, it was a kind of a higher education attitude. Exactly. And they looked down upon people, and it's, it's just like years ago when if you say, lift your hands, no, that's a charismatic thing. That's you can't right. do that. That's right. Clap your hands. No, you can't do that. That's a charismatic <laughs> thing. And so we make a mistake, or we don't, but